Okay, let's begin. Welcome to the public involvement meeting for North Holton Street Viaduct Rehab Project proposed by the Wisconsin Department of Transportation and City of Milwaukee Department of Public Works. This meeting is being recorded and will be posted on the project website. We ask that you mute your microphone. At the end of the presentation, we will open it up for questions or comments. At that time, you can press the raise your hand button and we will call on you to unmute your microphone. Feel free to also submit your questions or comments in the chat box and we will address them during the discussion segment of this meeting. We will repeat this presentation at 5 p.m. in case there's new attendees who are joining us this evening. Um, Jim, can you go to the next slide, please? Thank you. Uh, joining us tonight is our project team, which consists of the Wisconsin Department of Transportation project manager, Greg Hafeman, David Tapia, who is our Department of Public Works major projects manager, who is here on behalf of our project engineer, Teresa Kubista. Uh, we also have our structural design manager, Jonathan Thomas, our structural design engineer, Jim Hagen, and myself, Megan O'Connor serving as the project liaison for residents and businesses. I do see that we have representatives from the Alderman's districts here in attendance as well. Um, if you guys would like to say a few words now or you can wait till uh, our comment section, that would be great. Um, and Jim, you can take over. Thank you very much, Megan. The, the agenda for tonight's meet. First of all, I wanted to welcome you all for attending. Uh, really excited about this project, and I'm glad you're expressing interest in it. Uh, the agenda for tonight's meeting will will be doing a project location overview. We'll be talking about existing conditions of the structure. We'll be uh, talking about the phases of the project. The project is being uh, done in three phases and the scope of work. And we'll have uh, some discussion and overview on complete streets, and then we'll be opening uh, this uh, meeting up to questions and comments. This next slide shows the project location. This structure connects uh, many neighborhoods together, neighborhoods of Bray Street, East Town, River West, Harambe, and Brewers Hill. There's also a marsupial bridge which runs underneath the structure and the Oak Leaf Trail uh, is on the marsupial bridge. Also below the structure are water and commerce streets. The Milwaukee River is under the structure as well as river walks at both the north and south bank of the Milwaukee River. Cottage Park is to the upper uh, the trails uh, from the Oak Leaf Trail lead up to Cottage Park, uh, at, uh, which is slightly off the screen. Uh, Lakefront Brewery is located almost immediately below the structure in this area. And um, I also do want to do a call out for Blue Dress Park. Uh, an arts area at this northwestern corner of the bridge. The structure was originally, uh, there was a structure here built in 1892, and that was the first viaduct at this location. Parts of the existing north abutment are built on top of the original abutment of that first structure. That structure was replaced with the current North Holton Street Viaduct in 1926. And there was a major rehabilitation done between the years 1987 and 1988. It's at that time that they put on uh, the railing at the curb face and a uh, new deck occurred at that time in the fencing. There are no major changes to the structure. Uh, no major changes are planned from an aesthetic standpoint other than painting of the steel frame superstructure and substructure piers. 
there's actually 14 total tiers and 15 spans that make up the structure and two abutments. A, a historical review uh, of the bridge was completed uh, by UWM. The bridge rehabilitation scope will not have an adverse effect on the historical character of the structure. The bridge is currently both structurally deficient and functionally obsolete. After the rehabilitation project, the sufficiency rating will improve and the bridge will not be structurally deficient. The bridge rehabilitation meets all FHWA and Wisconsin DOT safety and design requirements. These are some uh, representative photos showing existing conditions on the structure. The upper left view shows uh, uh, it's a view looking north on the top of deck. It's basically starting at the south abutment and proceeding north. The uh, ridge actually has two curves of the same radius. There's the first curve swings from looking north to the northwest, and then there's a straight section, and then the second curve swings uh, look uh, swings to the north. The sec the middle upper shows the concrete deck. The concrete deck will remain, but we are doing concrete surface repair to areas of the deck. The upper right photo shows uh, a deck expansion joint. There's 11 expansion joints on the bridge, and these are in uh, mostly failing condition. And that leads us to the lower left, which shows a pier face uh, below the bridge and the corrosion on the pier face due to uh, salt water leaking on the structural steel. The middle lower shows uh, the north abutment. You can actually see the land and stone remnant uh, abutment from the original bridge. Uh, portions of the existing north abutment were built on top of that. We'll be doing uh, reinforced concrete repairs to both abutments and doing bearing replacement at both abutments. And the lower right shows a typical uh, substructure pier base. The steel framed uh, piers sit on top of reinforced concrete uh, uh, substructure units. Project over uh, the, oh, I'm sorry, I missed the uh, details of the deck geometry. And uh, this is an important slide. The slide to the upper left or to the left shows the integral uh, crash tested railing that's at the curb face. And it shows the outside railing, which is not crash, crash tested. The slide to the right shows the current uh, pavement marking configuration of the bridge. And this will be the uh, final pavement marking configuration once the uh, uh, rehab is completed. You basically have a protected bike lane uh, in each direction, north and southbound. You have one traffic lane in each direction and you have a center median. The protected bike lane is painted and also the center median is, median is painted. Moving into the details of the phase construction, for phase one, the construction will start in uh, the year 2023. Uh, the design work for that phase is currently uh, being done now by, by our office. Uh, the existing concrete deck and exterior concrete pedestrian walk railings and integral crash tested vehicular railing at curb are to remain Limited concrete surface repairs will be performed on the bridge deck. The existing concrete bridge railings will remain as is, except at expansion joints. Steel railings at approach wing walls are to be painted black existing color. The chain link fence is, is to remain. All the expansion joints in the deck, 11 total, are to be replaced. An approximate four foot wide section of the bridge deck uh, Will, will be removed to replace the expansion joints. And else, that also includes the railings. The, the girders at, uh, the girder bearings of both the north and south, south abutment are to be replaced. Uh, 
other items that will occur during phase one, uh, the substructure structural steel and reinforced concrete repairs will occur at piers one through eight. Piers one through eight are from, uh, the numbering starts from the south, above, the south end of the bridge and proceeds to just south of the north side of the river. So all the piers from the north bank of the river south will be repaired during phase one. The substructure structural steel of piers one through eight will then be painted. Reinforced concrete repairs will occur at the north and south abutments and below the water line at piers seven and eight located in the Waukee River. We'll be using a movable coffer dam to address, to access the uh, areas of the piers in the river that are below the water line. Traffic control will, will move vehicles to one side of the bridge at a time to complete the expansion joint work. Going on to phase two, we have, which will start in 2024, the design, uh, the construction will start in 2024, the design work will start in 2023. The substructural the substructure structural steel and reinforced concrete repairs will occur to piers 9 to 14. That's from the north bank of the Milwaukee River all the way up to the north abutment. Structural steel repairs are to columns and cross bracing. The substructure structural steel of piers 9 to 14 will be, then be painted. The existing stair at pier 12 uh, is to be replaced and will be ADA compliant. Moving on to phase three, the construction for phase three will be in year 2025. The design for phase three will be in 2024. Superstructural steel repairs to main girders. I, I want to differentiate the substructure from superstructure. The super, uh, superstructures, anything from the top of the pier to the top side of the deck, including the railings. The substructure starts at the underside of the deck and goes all the way down to the ground level. So basically we'll be doing all the substructure repairs in phases one and two, but in phase three, we'll be doing repairs to the superstructure steel, which includes the stringers, four beams, trusses, and I'll throw in purlins too. We have lots of purlins on the bridge. So um, the entire steel superstructure of the bridge is to be sandblasted and painted. Superstructure includes all, I already mentioned that. So that takes care of the phases. Uh, this next photo is a view looking to the northwest. This is a rendering. And uh, basically it shows uh, looking from the river walk at, that's at, on the south bank looking uh, northwest. Uh, in this you can see the marsupial bridge, which actually has a separate uh, state uh, bridge ID number. It's actually considered a separate structure. Uh, it's called marsupial because it does hang or is partially supported by the Holton Street Viaduct. You can see the steel rods that go up to the uh, tiers seven and eight that partially support it. It also has uh, there. It also has its own abutment. It starts at the level of Water Street. The marsupial starts at the level of Water Street and proceeds all the way up to uh, the Oakleaf Trail, which comes down the hill from Cottage Park. The Milwaukee River Channel is the main channels in the middle. Uh, this is a navigation channel, must be must be kept open to navigation at all times. Uh, and we have the uh, South River Walk. The South River Walk right now is does not completely go through, but that there are plans to uh, continue the extension to the south. Uh, the North River Walk, of course, uh, goes completely through. Uh, and then the Milwaukee, uh, the, I'm sorry, the Lakefront Brewery is in this area to the northwest side of the bridge. This, we're, we're talking about construction uh, staging in this slide. There will be intermittent closures of the marsupial bridge uh, hanging below the structure to facilitate safe removal of bridge deck concrete during expansion joint replacement and painting of the bridge superstructure. There will be temporary closures to Swing Park and the Milwaukee River Walk at the south of the bridge for expansion joint replacement and painting. 
The navigation channel will remain open in Milwaukee River during all phases of construction. We actually have three channels, so the middle channel might be closed on a temporary basis. North Commerce and Water Streets are to remain open during construction with partial short-term closures. I think we're to the next stage where uh, we're at uh, complete streets and David Tapia is going to be taking over for this. Right. <clears throat> Thank you, Jim. Um, yeah, just wanted to briefly touch on um, our uh, complete streets um, efforts on this project. Just want to point out that you know, we do recognize the importance of the uh, route to both bicyclists and pedestrians. Um, we'd love to do more, uh, but as Jim alluded to before, um, the the barrier that is up on top of the bridge deck is actually part of the bridge deck, and so we are unable to move that uh, barrier uh, to provide uh, different safer uh, bike and or pedestrian accommodations, which <clears throat> excuse me was a, a comment that we had received prior to this meeting, and we want to discuss it. Um, and as you've heard from Jim, and you can understand that the primary focus of this project is a maintenance um, of the structure, uh, a lot of um, painting uh, of the steel uh, and some minor um, work on the structure will occur, occurs, but we're not removing and replacing the structure. So there isn't an opportunity to narrow the structure as part of this project. Once construction phase one is complete, we do plan on putting back the striping that is out there currently where it's a single lane uh, in one direction for vehicles. And we have the marked bike lanes with the, the buffered um, space between them. Those that will go back after phase one. Some work in phases two and three, uh, may, you may see equipment have to occupy some of that space temporarily uh, during those phases. Uh, but more of that details will be flushed out as we go through the design of the next two phases. Uh, we're constantly looking not only at you know this project, but throughout the city of ways to provide safety enhancement for bicyclists as well as pedestrians, and we will continue to do so through the design process uh, to see if there is anything we can do in the final phase. Uh, we certainly don't want to do anything in phase one that might be an obstruction to construction in future phases, but it does give us a couple years to try to come up with some sort of additional enhancements that could possibly be done as part of this project or a separate project in a couple years. Uh, we will, um, as we develop these plans, uh, traffic control staging plans, we will continue to look at how we're going to provide accommodations to the bicyclists as well as the pedestrians during the construction. Next slide, Jim. All right. Uh, Megan's put this together. We have a lot of information at a lot of different locations, uh, Facebook, Twitter, as well as our city website. Um, where actually you can find a lot of good information about a lot of the projects that we've got going on here in the city right now. Um, so, you know, yep. oh, go ahead, Megan. It's okay, thank you. Um, just so everyone knows that a recording of this meeting will be posted on our project website, which is listed on this slide, milwaukee.gov slash dpw slash Holton Bridge. You can also sign up to receive project updates and submit your comments directly online. Uh, so please check out the project website. Um, as Jim mentioned earlier, with our design phases uh, occurring during construction, I will be sending construction updates as well as project updates when we are at the completion of those design um, phases for the future projects or you know, stage two and three. Um, so you will be receiving updates um, moving forward as well for this project. Um, so if you can go to the next slide, Jim, we can show our contact information on how you can reach us. This officially uh, concludes our formal presentation, so we would like to open it up for any questions or comments that you may have. Uh, if you would like to raise your hand, 
um, press the button and I will call on you to unmute your microphone and I will also monitor the chat box to see if anyone submitted comments. OK, so. Um, Russ, you can unmute your uh, microphone. Yeah, I have Thank a, you. a question if you can hear me. Uh, mm -hmm. Sure, actually, one is that we, we have concrete um, falling off the bridge into the parking lot here from the bridge above. Will any of this be addressed during this uh, redo of the bridge? And also the water from up uh, on top of Holton Street uh, drains down into the parking lot below and goes across the Riverwalk and causes icy conditions, especially in winter. I was wondering if anything will be done with uh, moving the water that will be coming off the bridge. This is uh, Jim Hagen. Uh, so in phase two, Russ, uh, the, uh, the the area uh, from the north side of the river starts at Pier 9, and the Pier 12 is just south of Commerce Street, and we have expansion joints at Piers 9, 11, and 12, I believe, which will be replaced during phase one. Those, uh, the, the Concrete that's uh, spalling is coming from the deteriorated co concrete that's below those joints. So in phase one in construction year 2023, that concrete will be removed and uh, the expansion joints replaced, which will uh, alleviate the water leakage problem and also the uh, concrete spalling problem. Um. From my, my experience, it doesn't come from those expansion joints. There's a bevel that's uh, along the entire bridge. You can have city employees go up there, try to knock that stuff down. Um, also, there is a problem with the water draining down, but it's not from the scuffers. The scuffers are where the problems are that comes down and uh, it just drains all the water from what's up on top of the bridge down, down below. And so those, those, to me, those are separate problems. This is Jonathan, the structural design manager for the city. Russ, you are correct that the, there is another detail on the bridge that has been an issue for spalling concrete, uh, you know, in particular the last couple of years, but probably for quite a while. And we are looking at our options of what to do to address that concern. Um, and uh, an approach has not been finalized for that at this point, um, but we are looking at what we can do there. Um, and if the drainage issue is related to the uh, scuppers and the outlet location from those scuppers, um, that's something that we could take a look at uh, addressing since the use of that area obviously has changed since those pipes would have been installed 30 years ago. Um, it's not something currently included in our scope, but we could look at it um, to see what we can do. Greatly appreciated. Thank you. I would like to call on Eve. Uh, hi, everybody. Can you hear me? Yes. Uh, thanks so much. Uh, I just wanted to say uh, thank you for. Uh, uh, hi, just want to say. Um, uh, thank you for uh, doing the bike lane striping on the Holton Street Bridge uh, and taking the lanes down to one car in each direction it has uh, really improved the kind of the traffic and noise and racing situation there. Um, one, uh, I don't know if this has been uh, covered or is going to be uh, addressed. Uh, there are a lot of pigeons uh, that live under the bridge. Um, and uh, it's actually leading to the deterioration of the marsupial bridge. If you walk along the marsupial bridge, um, there are certain areas on the bridge where there's a lot of pigeon droppings, and it's um, destroying the wood uh, on the marsupial bridge. Um, I don't know if there's a way to keep the pigeons out of there or do some type of netting or something. It's a great bridge uh, underneath there. There's lots of kind of ledges for the pigeons to live on. So uh, just wondering if that is something that can be addressed as part of uh, the project. Um, it is really uh, uh, leading to uh, it's severe, it's neg negatively really impacting the marsupial, which is uh, also deteriorating. So that is my question. Yes, we had uh, original project of 
a number of years back where we we put up a netting to uh, deter the pigeons, but unfortunately we had to take that down to do remediation work at the expansion joints. So uh, I, I think the next stage would be to reinstall that after the expansion joints are have been replaced. That was a city project that was not a state funded. The uh, so it's basically using city funds, local city funds for doing that. Okay. Yeah, so just something to, to think about because we have one problem creating another over there. So uh, thank you for answering my question. And thank you for bringing that up. Um, we were also told that there's at least a couple raccoon nests in the bridge structure as well. Um, Officer Keith Garland, you can unmute your microphone. All right. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for being here and allowing me to be here. I just had two questions. Uh, one, I'm not too familiar with the bridge. Do you know if there's any lighting in the underneath the bridge or in? Are you going to add any lighting when it comes to the construction so it'll be visible at night? That's the first. Yes, uh, this is Jim Hagan. So there, there is lighting on the marsupial under the bridge, but also uh, there's uh, lighting at uh, the swing park, uh, which we didn't mention in uh, our introduction. But there is a park at the south end of the bridge, basically from the north curve of Water Street uh, to the uh, beginning of the marsupial, and there's uh, lighting in that area. Uh, okay, awesome. And then my next question: uh, When it, once you start the construction, do they have a plan far as they're going to completely stop the flow of traffic on the bridge? You're going to have one lane of traffic. Uh, these are just general questions I have that I'm going to have to answer just for uh, the residents in the community are wondering that as well. Yeah, yes, the, the, the traffic on Holton Street will remain open at all times. There'll be one lane of traffic in, in each direction. Basically, we'll, when we do the expansion threat replacement, we'll do the east side, so we'll shift traffic to the west half of the bridge and uh, the curb to curb face, we have 60 feet. So we'll we'll have plenty of room to allow one lane of traffic in each direction and still do the repair work to the uh, other half. Awesome, thank you very much. Uh, during, also during that time, we uh, were coming up with uh, how to accommodate the bicyclists and that's that's still in progress, but we're, we're planning on accommodating the bicyclists and the pedestrians during doing all phases of construction. Thank you, Mr. Hagan. Um, which brings up our next question uh, from Joseph. If the existing painted median has a positive safety impact or could it be removed in favor of a wider bike pedestrian buffer? David or Jonathan, did you want to chime in on this? And I can chime in too if needed, Jim. I can, How about I can go ahead, it. Mike? Yeah, yeah, this, is the, this is Mike Anston, uh, DPW Multimodal Transportation Manager. Um, so the, the restriping obviously was just completed earlier this year. Um, you know, a positive safety benefit. I don't know if it, I don't know if we can say that at this point, but I think the intent of that buffer space was to, uh, to, to maintain alignment across the structure and as it transitions down to Van Buren Street. Um, we can obviously look at the uh, the widths and, and make a, you know minor adjustments here and there, but ultimately the bridge is uh, you know it's it's a pretty wide bridge, so we don't want to go too wide either with the the buffer space in the bike lane and create a situation where it makes it um, uh, possibly too easy for people to drive in that space. But we can we can absolutely look at it. Great, thank you. Um, Eves also wanted to add that the drain grates on the deck of the bridge are clogged. Um, not sure if that's contributing to water issues below the bridge. So we we can have our maintenance crews inspect that, correct? That's correct, Megan. Yeah. Uh, that's a perennial problem uh, because it has uh, quite a uh, slope from the north abutment down to the south. The debris and leaves are carried along that and it gets it, this bridge gets inspected every year 
and uh, it's noted in uh, inspection reports about the scuppers being uh, clogged, and then that report goes to our bridge maintenance staff. So it's just a matter of them uh, getting out there and, and cleaning those out. Um, if you guys could keep your microphone on mute, unless um, you would like to ask a question or submit a comment, just helps eliminate background noise. Thank you. Uh, Russ, feel free to unmute your microphone. Yeah, be before we start out, you talked about the uh, art park that was up on top, this little triangle area. Um, but I don't see any art up there. I was wondering if there was any plans or if there's anything that you can do in, in the budget or get other state grants or something to uh, to put some art there and if there's anything else you can do to, to beautify the, the bridge. We were asked, we did a presentation to Milwaukee Arts Board, and they asked us if that space was going to be reserved for the Blue Dress Arts Park, and we said most definitely there will be no uh, changes to that configuration of that triangular shaped area. Um, Arts Board, I know, is actively seeking grants, whether that, what they're, uh, if they're seeking a grant for that specific area, I'm not sure. Alderman Kovac, do you want to chime in on this? Uh, yes, this did come up at the uh, Arts Board. Uh, I'm not an expert on uh, Blue Dress Park, but it's my understanding that to some extent it's conceptual. The idea being we're just going it, to, it's art because we say it is, but it's this sort of space that's there. There have been events there. I was a judge at an event there. I don't think it would be all out of, I think it would be something it could happen. Obviously, it would be best if it had city approval, but actually putting something that's more obviously art there, it uh, could certainly happen. But I do think that uh, it's a, it's a bit of a um, it's a bit conceptual, is my understanding uh, currently. But that doesn't mean it has to stay that way. And then, if I could ask a little bit about the or or just chime in a bit on the other question about the widening of the pedestrian access, that's definitely something I had asked for from the beginning and. I was hoping, as were I think that others, that we could just move the existing Jersey barriers and make everything wider, but those are built in. But I, I would ask, and I, I've asked uh, Mike this, you know, privately, but I, I, I appreciate the restriping. It, it connects well to Van Buren. Van Buren may get paved someday. If it becomes an issue, if we could be, if, if, our, if in our evaluation we're discovering that the restriping is not changing the traffic behavior, would uh, something like what we did on Locust and North with some limited extra Jersey barriers be possible? And would, the, would there be an engineering concern with this bridge? Y'all want me to take that one as well? Okay. Yep. Um, yep. Yes, yeah, feel free. Sure. <laughs> so, and, I, and I think that's kind of what David Tapia was was hinting at there is we are looking for ways uh, going forward. You know, the, the timing of the restriping project was you know interesting in that we knew this project was coming up so we didn't want to do too much and then have to take things out and you know we had to be mindful of uh, the money we were spending but yes we are looking at things similar to like what we, what we've done on locust and north to enhance excuse me to enhance the uh the bike lanes that were recently installed And, and I guess one other thing, and David said this as well, but just to reiterate, that would uh, likely be done kind of outside of the the scope of the project we're talking about here tonight. But because it is, you know, but we would be talking about relatively low cost improvements. It is something that we would look to handle um, separately from this project. Thank you, Mike. If you have any questions or concerns, you can raise your hand. We will call on you. Feel free to submit any 
questions in our chat box or directly on our project website if it comes to you later tonight or you know in the next few weeks. We will be um, presenting the same PowerPoint at 5 p.m. for anyone who um, can join us later. So I do want to thank everyone um, in attendance for participating in this public involvement meeting. Uh, hearing from you is very important. So we thank you for your time. Thank you. The representative from the fire department, uh, you can unmute your microphone. Yes, hi, thank you. Yeah. Uh, 
I apologize. I, I wasn't able to catch the first uh, 15 minutes or so, uh, and I'm, I plan on listening to the next session. But for the fire department's purposes, as I understood, there are still going to be lanes of traffic, one lane in each direction, north and south. Uh, for us, we're wondering, uh, is that going to be wide enough, large enough, and be able to continue to support our vehicles, our heavy apparatus, uh, as that is a major um, traffic route for us going from uh, northern downtown to the River West neighborhood. Uh, we just want to make sure that that is open and if it's not, we so that we can uh, plan accordingly and uh, have alternate routes. Jim Hagen from Structural Engineering. Uh, we we will be maintaining two 12 foot wide lanes in each direction. Uh, I think maybe we should have discussions with your department because I know sometimes when vehicle large vehicles go around a curve, they need slightly more than 12 feet. So there's uh, we should have that discussion to make sure we meet your minimum requirement. Um, and I'm sorry, you had uh, you had the question. Oh, the weight. I'm sorry. Yeah. So the uh, the the bridge will be able to carry uh, the uh, rating of the uh, uh, trucks that you use. OK, we're not excellent. We're not, we're not changing the uh, load bearing capacity, uh, the rating capacity of the bridge with, with the rehab or during the phases. OK, and will bus lines be operating on that during the construction as well? Uh, my that's my understanding that the we would have bus traffic on the bridge also. Uh, OK, um, one thing kind of related to it, I guess, is uh, the ri the riverway will still be open to all river traffic, correct? We're, we'll be narrowing the middle channel uh, because we're doing a coffer dam, but it will it will stay open uh, for uh, boat traffic. Excellent. Um, and then uh, let's see. As far as uh, touching base again, what would what office was that? that we can uh, make contact with to uh, discuss our minimum requirements for uh, traffic lanes? You, you can uh, you can contact a structural engineering section or if you direct a question to Megan, she'll send it over to us. Um, we, we, yes, that, that would be probably the best way to do contact Megan and then she'll she'll give that question to us. Excellent, thank you very much. Yep, and I believe you have my contact information. It's also on the screen. If you want to just shoot me an email, we'll get that coordinated. Great, I see that. Thank you. Thank you. Um, while we wait to begin our presentation at 5 p.m., we did receive a question. Um, if the north side river walk <clears throat> will stay open to pedestrian traffic for all phases of construction. There will be some temporary closures to the north side river walk, mainly during uh, phase two. Uh, we'll we'll try to limit that to very short term periods, but uh, there, yes, there will be some closures to the north side river walk. Thank you. I'll um, submit that in the chat box as well. And Jim, can you go back to the first slide? Thank you. 